The Friends of Charwell are our independent charitable trust that have grown up over the last few years to work very closely with me and with the school uh, in a supportive way. Um, they're made up primarily of, of a trustees who have got to know the school in different ways over the years. Uh, many are ex-parents, uh, some are former staff. Um, they're just um, a, a group of incredibly supportive, like-minded individuals that have got the school at their heart and are trying everything to help us at the moment uh, deal with the financial pressures that schools face, but are also particularly interested in doing things which will really benefit young people particularly those things that often schools struggle to afford because actually with funding pressures, they're not the sorts of things that you can always spend money on, but the children desperately want and need. One of the things that the Friends have funded is uh, the space we're sitting in now. This is our North Site Fiction Library. Uh, it's a beautiful space. Uh, it's a new space within our school, surrounded by beautiful uh, literature, lovely surroundings, which the children are really enjoying spending time in at break and lunchtime, but also in their lessons uh, as well. Another area where the Friends have been critical over the last 18 months is particularly in helping with our remote learning through funding Chromebooks. Uh, when children have, have having to remote learn during lockdowns and so on, the Friends have helped us to be really proactive in getting funds so that we can source Chromebooks and other resources, particularly for disadvantaged children that they can be using at home. With these new Chromebooks, it's a lot easier in lessons because you don't have to get up out of our seats and we could work while looking at the teacher or at the whiteboard. We did have laptops before, but these are so much faster. With the Chromebooks as well, the teacher can project your work onto the whiteboard for the whole class can see. So they can, if you made a mistake or if you did something very well, they can learn from it. That's a lot better because then the teacher can easily correct you and other people can realise where they went wrong. You'll have also seen today our wonderful new mural on Southsite. Uh, that mural is stunning uh, in our science block. We're so proud of it because it actually is a bespoke mural telling lots of the story about science and its connection to this city. Um, it's only something that we've been able to fund with a friend's support. It wouldn't have been able to be afforded otherwise, but the children find it really stimulating. It makes them feel that they're genuinely doing science in a scientific environment. It's one of those things, you see it every day, you look at it every day, it eventually yeah. sinks in rather than just sitting in the classroom and learning it. I think especially for people who are, who are more visual learners and they can use it to revise because it's like pictures and it's not just like a whole bunch of revision cards or text in your science book, it's like pictures and it also has like some little text and diagrams that are really, really useful as well. And labels. Well. Yeah. And useful labels. Yeah, useful labels. When I first saw the mural, I was honestly like amazed because not only is it full of like really interesting and useful facts, it's it draws your eye and it's really cool to look at, to be honest. I think it also reminds you of stuff that you haven't learnt in a while. So like there are lots of stuff from year seven that you might not go over, but then like you have it, so you have knowledge from the past as well and it keeps reminding you. I think even if it's not helpful, it's just very visually appealing. Um, and it it's quite lightens nice. up the corridor. Yeah, definitely. It lightens up it's the corridor. It's quite nice when you're just walking up the stairs, like going to science and you can just look and there's lots of information. One of the other things I'd mention is it again is with friend support that we've actually been able to change many elements of our outdoor spaces for children, particularly during the period of the pandemic. We've had to invest a lot of money on outdoor uh, furniture, uh, spaces for the children to be outdoors, which of course during the period of the pandemic was where they actually were needing to spend quite a lot of their time in terms of both their learning and, uh, and safety. And again, hugely expensive to resource across a big school. And yet with a friend's financial um, backing, we've been able to do that and the students have really benefited. They've also started now helping the school to support our much bigger projects. The Charles School is nearly 60 years old. Um, and we are working all the time to continue to improve and develop it in terms of the things that I think particularly um, the children moving deeply into the 21st century need within a really, really well-equipped secondary school. The most obvious example of that at the moment is of course our new 3G pitch, um, which has been uh, part funded certainly by the school and also by the uh, Football Association. 
has been particularly supported by the Friends. Uh, they've helped uh, financially, but they've also helped with our work with partners and uh, making the whole um, project um, appealing and drawing in lots and lots of interest across uh, the city and more widely. We have uh, loads of students who come up through our feeder schools living in, in North Oxford, in Marston and around the local area. Um, it would be really nice for local sports clubs to be able to use our facility and develop links and, and club links with our school. And I know that there are several students across the school of all ages who are very excited to have the opportunity to be able to use the 3G once it's finished. With 3G your boots will never be getting muddy, it'll be clean and the ball will travel much quicker. So that would be really good for fast paced football as well. The old pitch over there they're really bumpy and muddy and they just get really muddy and then the 3G pitch will be like completely flat and really won't get you muddy and it'll be really fun. We see the 3G pitch as stage one in a much bigger project now potentially going over the next 10 to 15 years. Now uh, we have spent time working on a master plan for the future of the school which will of course will include all of the elements that you'd expect to see within a school at the heart of its community. We'd be very excited about a new uh, performance hall, new art spaces. Uh, we're also very interested in uh, different ways in which we can showcase the skills and talents of our young people, but also making sure that that's a facility which the community is able to use as well. It's something which particularly during the pandemic has become more noticeable, I think, within the school. Uh, the fact that we were a centre for the delivery of the vaccinations, for instance, has shown us what a role a school can play within its community, particularly during challenging times. So we would see uh, the new 3G pitch as stage one uh, and with multiple other areas over the next few years, which we think will be of great benefit to our children and our community. Chawa School is a huge school. We've currently got 2,065 children on our roll. Um, we serve some fascinating parts of the city. Um, a hugely varied and eclectic community. Um, we seek to be incredibly inclusive. Uh, we've got great diversity at the heart of our school. Um, and we really would um, welcome your involvement and support of the Friends. Uh, they're a fantastic group. They can only do the things that they are doing with the financial support of uh, our parents but also anyone else within the community that wants to put um, some support in. They're incredibly welcoming. They're incredibly thankful of any support that they can get. Uh, and I would really, really encourage you to get involved with the friends if you can.